Greetings, loyal subscribers and honoured guests. I'm bringing back Commodore Classics this week and taking the opportunity to give it a makeover. Please let me know what you think about the new look, because I think I might keep it for my Zap64 Cover Tape Chaos series that is also in the works. Yes, I know I've been promising that for ages now, but this time it is actually true. Before that though, I'm going to be taking a look at the four shooter maps designed, programmed and released by Sarah Jane Avery with a bit of help from Protovision. Sarah Jane is a veteran of the games industry, having worked on many classic systems back when they were current, including the Commodore 64, Amiga, Sega CD and more. She is also an author with her Bridey Witch series spanning multiple volumes. She is currently working on an RPG adaptation of her Bridey Witch books for the C64 and you can keep up to date with the development on her blog or by following her on Twitter. In 2019, her past experience of working on shooter maps led her to start making brand new ones for our favourite bread bin. So let's take a look at each one of them. Sarah Jane was a fan of the arcade shooter map Star Force, much like myself, so this is where the inspiration for making Neutron first came from. You can see the similarities in the style of the levels, the enemy design and movement patterns, and in the bonus bees that you have to shoot for extra points. When this first dropped in 2019, this felt like a breath of fresh air. While I did enjoy shooter maps like this back in the day, it was pretty rare to actually get a decent one on the C64 at the time, because they were often bogged down with sprite flicker, slow down, or just plain bad game design. Nowadays, programmers like Sarah Jane can take all of the knowledge about the C64 that has been amassed, together with modern design techniques and principles, and combine them to make the games they would have liked to have seen on the system all along. Because Neutron was entered into an RGCD competition, the game was restricted to within a certain size limit, which did have an impact on the game. For example, there is really only one end of level boss, which is repeated multiple times. While this is also in keeping with the design of Star Force, it would have been nice to see a bit more variety. Nevertheless, Neutron was a very promising start, and could only lead to greater things later on. Then later that same year, in the run-up to Christmas, Sarah Jane released Santron. This is essentially the same game as Neutron, with, with the exact same mechanics and level layouts, but with the music and graphics adjusted to feel more festive. The player-controlled ship has changed to a Santa hat, for example, and some of the enemy sprites include candy canes, snowballs and crackers. I really hate those crackers, by the way. I've lost countless ships because of their devious movement patterns. The original Neutron soundtrack is replaced with some really catchy versions of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, we wish you a Merry Christmas and more. This was a nice surprise back in late 2019 and it will be worth digging out again once a year to blast some festive aliens each Christmas Eve. Whereas Santron was a nice Christmas bonus for all us C64 fans, Z2 Wing was the true follow up and a whole new game to enjoy. The inspiration for the game this time was a Tecmo arcade release called Gemini Wing, which I was not really very familiar with at all before playing Z2 Wing. Sarah Jane had personal experience porting the Atari ST version of Gemini Wing over to the Amiga, which frustrated her at the time because the ST version was not really very good at all, and Sarah Jane would rather have preferred to start from scratch in order to take advantage of the host hardware. However, the publisher wanted to get the game out quickly, and so Sarah Jane did the job she was hard to do and ported it over. Making Zeta Wing has allowed her to write this wrong. While you can see where the influences are, it's definitely not a straight copy of Gemini Wing. The power-ups level up gradually as you collect the icons, rather than trailing along behind your ship, for example. The blue skies and the insectoid enemies are still present though. Zeta Wing also has some extremely catchy music too, which you probably won't be able to get out of your head for some time after hearing it. All in all, this is a noticeable step up from Neutron, with more variety and more interesting mechanics.
Soul Force is the most recent release, and this time takes advantage of the cartridge format to really feel like you could be playing a console game rather than one on a 40 year old 8 bit computer. The perspective has shifted from vertical shooter to horizontal this time around, and the influences on the game include the likes of Gradius, R Type, and a game that Sarah Jane worked on in the past called Soul Star for the Mega CD. The game features 20 different levels, each with their own unique enemies and music, story and interstitial screens before in each stage, save states on the cartridge as well as a password option if you prefer to use that, and multiple different power-ups including shields, speed up and increased firepower. Personally, I much prefer a well-designed horizontal shoot 'em up to a vertical one, though I do appreciate both. I'm not sure why, I just find horizontal shooters more interesting for some reason. This is definitely Sarah Jane's best game yet, like I said earlier you could easily compare this to a console release for something like the Mega Drive or the SNES. I've only managed to get to about stage 4 so far but I'm going to keep returning to it so that I get better at it and see more of the levels. So there you have it, four fantastic shooter maps that you can enjoy on your original Commodore 64, C64 Mini or Maxi, Retro Pi, Emulec or Mr. Device Today. If Sarah Jane creates any more shooter maps, you can be sure I will be checking them out. For now though, she's still working her way on that Brody Witch RPG, which I shall also be playing as soon as it drops. Do let me know what you thought of the newly designed Commodore Classics and stay tuned for those Zap cover tape videos, they won't be long now. See you on the next video, and in the meantime, take care. <laughs>